So you're curious to know what the cost of living in Oshawa is? Stay tuned and this video will help answer all of your questions. My name is Brad with Red at Home Realty. I am a local realtor here in Oshawa, Ontario. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, you can leave comments and I'll personally respond to them. These videos and this channel is for people who are looking to relocate here from different cities, different provinces, even different countries. I absolutely love it when people reach out and have questions or they need more information about moving here. So you can reach out, you can call, you can text, you can email, you can send the carrier pigeons, you can send smoke signals, whatever is easiest for you. And I got your back with helping you move here. I hope you enjoy this video. And also, this is my first time using a green screen. So if you have any uh, feedback on that, drop it in the comments below. I'd absolutely love to know what people think about that. The first part of the video is gonna be on house prices. So there's a huge variance in Oshawa, uh, between the house prices that you can get. They start in the 200,000s and they go all the way up north of a million dollars. That's depending on the type of house, the area. So in this example, I'm just gonna use the complete average. So in Oshawa as a whole, the average house price. And then same thing with uh, the Durham region, the greater Toronto area, the province of Ontario, and then the country of Canada. That way you can see how Oshawa ranks overall. So first off is, I guess, comparing it to Canada. The price average house price in Oshawa is about $24,000 higher than the Canadian average. It is $116,000 below the provincial average. It is almost $300,000 below the greater Toronto area average. And it is about $90,000 below the Durham region average. So what are those house prices you may ask? Uh, so let's just go, I'll do a screenshot so you can um, and okay so yeah that's me hopefully i'm not showing too much leg it was a hot day and i like shorts um, okay so i've already pulled up the national price map this is on the korea website so you can go on to the korea website and you can actually pull this information yourself uh, but to make it a little easier for you i have put it up here already uh, so in canada average house price for march of 2020 was 541,000, and then if you're looking here at ontario for March of this year, the average price was 682,000. And then if you get in specific and you go into the Durham region, hold on to it here, um, average house price was 655,000. Uh, so it's, it's good. And then if you go onto the Durham region website, which is the, I guess the, the real estate board for Durham region, uh, you go into March, 2020, the housing report, it shows you that for Durham, um, average house price was 656. So it's a little different than what it said on the Korea website, but it could have been the day because each day a new sale was recorded, it would sway the numbers a little bit. Uh, so with Oshawa, it shows here that the average house price was 566,000. Uh, so it gives you a good idea in terms of how Oshawa compares to the, the country, the province, the area, and then the region. The second part of this video has to do with the rental prices here in Oshawa. So if you're looking to move to Oshawa and you wanted to rent first before you buy, or if you're just going to move here and you plan on renting, the rental price is here. And when I give you these numbers, it's going to be, uh, just to keep it simple because there's so many different types of rentals, it's going to be based on renting a two bedroom condominium or a two bedroom apartment. And when you're going to compare Oshawa to the, the TREB as a whole, so TREB covers pretty much everywhere in and around the GTA. It's, um, so TREB as a whole is just about $1,000 more than what the prices here in Oshawa are for rentals. And then if you're gonna compare Oshawa to the Durham region, the Durham region is about $215 more expensive than Oshawa is. So if you're curious to see what those numbers are, uh, let's just go to the, um, I can show you. Okay, we're looking here and TREB totals. So this is um, this number right here for a two bedroom and it's an apartment and it's based on the fourth quarter of last year. The average in Treb as a whole, which covers all of these areas, is uh, $2,868. If you go down to the Durham region, 
the average here was two hundred and sorry two thousand and fifteen dollars was the average for a two bedroom, and then you look at Oshawa, which is this number right here, which shows the average was eighteen hundred dollars. So when you're going to compare Oshawa to pretty much any other of these cities, Oshawa is lower, except when you get to uh, different parts of Simcoe, they average a little bit lower, but. Um, as a whole, and if you're looking for something that is along the Lakeshore Go Line, um, Oshawa is pretty much the most affordable that you can get for rentals. And I hope you, um, you found that information useful. And this here I pulled off of the uh, Toronto Real Estate Board's website. Whenever I'm talking numbers, I like to, um, to show you where I'm getting that information. Just to make it easier, um, and easier to understand. And so let's jump on to the next part of the video. Third point in this video is going to be on restaurants and the cool thing I remember back before I even moved to Oshawa I went to these uh, Durham real estate investor meetings to you know keep a tune in the city and we were looking at buying investment properties at that point too and so we would always go and the very first one we went to it actually had the mayor of Oshawa who was there doing a speaking and pretty much just going over the, the plans for the city any developments that were happening and one of the fascinating points I took from that was he had mentioned when it came to restaurants, Oshawa had uh, three over 365 restaurants, meaning you could go each and every day, go to a different restaurant to have a meal, and at the end of the year, you would not have eaten at the same restaurant twice. That's a little neat fact that I found anyways. Um, there's so many options here in Oshawa. They have big chains like uh, Boston Pizza, uh, Red Lobster, and then they have like small one-of-a-kind one -kind type restaurants. Uh, like Berry Hill and Harpo's and Teddy's, which is probably one of the most like you know stapled restaurants here in Oshawa, and uh, Prep Castle Restaurant, which is great for breakfasts. Uh, Sherry's Diner, which is another one that's great for breakfast. The um, Crep Castle and Sherry's, uh, me and my family, they've gone, sorry, we've gone uh, multiple times there, and it was just like it's affordable. The quality of food was really good, and uh, the average price for uh, dinner for two at a medium quality restaurant here in Oshawa was about $72.50. You compare that to different parts of the GTA and it's around 80, uh, 90. Um, and the cool thing about it is all of the small one of a kind restaurants. The fourth part of the video has to do with property taxes. So anybody looking to purchase in Oshawa, there's probably no secret that Oshawa does have high property taxes. The percentage sits at about 1.34% of the um, estimated value pretty much calculated by MPAC. And when you compare it to other places, Toronto was the lowest. It's at 0.614%. And that's based on the assessed value, which is done by MPAC. Um, so it is higher here in Oshawa, but they do kind of factor in house prices and the average house prices. And that's why the percentages, although in Oshawa as a percentage is lower, the actual cost of purchasing a house is higher. So if you were to look at the exact same house, both in Oshawa and Toronto, although Toronto has the lower percentage, it's actually probably going to be in and around the same price just due to the fact of Toronto being so much more expensive. Um, on top of that, Toronto has a double land transfer tax. So when you're purchasing here in Oshawa, you pay a land transfer tax, which is a, it's, it's a different percentage for the first X amount of dollars and then after that. So I think the average is about $6,000 land transfer tax where if you are purchasing in Toronto, it's gonna to be higher, it's gonna be like 12,000. So my numbers on that, this isn't about land transfer tax. So that was just like a rough estimate to give you an idea. But property taxes in Toronto are lower and what they are here in Oshawa. So let's go and uh, we can see. So I'll record this video here and I'll be able to show you different areas in and around the GTA and what they actually go for. So this is just based on the uh, Zucasa website and again I like to use all information that everyone can verify for themselves. Um, okay so yeah this is the map here. Um, so it lists it here so from number one I guess they do it geographically so the numbers aren't in order. Uh, so this is Toronto right here an average home price they're saying here is 915,000 property tax rate 0.614% and then you go to Oshawa and the average home price 536,000 um, compared to Toronto like that's a big difference there so that percentage is not going to be that out of whack and then here they've actually ranked it um, from the lowest 
property tax rate all the way to the highest. So out of the 35 cities that Zucasa actually ranked, um, Oshawa sit in at 28. So Oshawa is not the cheapest, but the main thing is uh, they've done a lot of development here in the city. And at the end of the day, that costs money. So that's what they pull kind of this information from. And you know, that covers things like the fire department, the police service, uh, road maintenance. Like they, they do do a lot with that. And the neat thing about Oshawa, like when you're driving through, um, the traffic is. The sixth part of my video has to do with transportation. So I guess first and foremost, we'll start with gas prices. I don't know what's going on, but I'm loving it. Gas prices right now, as of April of 2020, are sitting at about 76 cents per liter. When you compare it to what it was at the beginning of the year, at the end of last year, it was $1.20, $1.30. So when you have a V8 truck and a V6 van, there are no cheap fill-ups at all. So when you're saving 30, 40, 50 cents a liter, that is absolutely fantastic. If you are reliant on transportation or that's your preference, then we can go to the screen view here and you so on the screen here you'll see that it's the Durham Region website so you can go on here and you can find all this information for yourself but for reference I've just put it on here so you can go through and see it. Uh, Durham Region uses Presto Pass so it's a reloadable card that is like a cash alternative so you're pre-paying for it so you do not have to worry about carrying cash or change or anything like that. So the, the price for an adult is $3.20 if you're using the Presto Pass. If you're looking at getting a monthly Presto Pass, it's $117, so that would give you unlimited rides on the Durham Transit train, not train, uh, bus, for $117 per month. If you are a youth, which is between 13 and 19 years old, a uh, single trip is $2.85. If you are looking at getting a monthly Presto Pass, it's $93.50. If you are a senior, so you're over 65 years old, the single trip Presto is $2.10. If you are looking at getting a monthly pass, it's $46. So it's, it's very affordable. And Durham Region, the transit in Oshawa is very good. There's bus stops a lot of, like on all of the major routes. And the main hub where all the buses kind of gravitate to is the Oshawa Center. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, I do have a video I did, which is the top five neighborhoods in Oshawa. And I do kind of cover that a little bit with the Vanier District and the Oshawa Center being a hub for all buses. If you are looking at commuting to downtown Toronto, there is the GO Train, which Oshawa is actually the last stop on the Lakeshore East Line which is absolutely fantastic because you can get to downtown Toronto via the train, which is a, is a favorite alternative to a lot of people driving downtown, having to pay for parking and deal with finding a parking spot and whatnot. So the GO train, it runs from 4 a.m. and then the last stop is at like 11.41 p.m. and it costs $10.31 per trip. And the way they did it is they got rid of the monthly passes. So now it is uh, it's a Presto Pass that you get and from one to 35 trips, it costs you $10.31 per trip. From trip 36 to 40, it costs you $1.40 per trip. After 40 trips, absolutely free. So if you are maxing out on just your commute back and forth to work, and let's just say a weekend comes along and you wanted to go downtown Toronto to watch the Jays, the Raptors, the Leafs, or just walk the streets of downtown Toronto, go to dinner, you can go down there and it won't cost you anything. So that's kind of like a neat thing. Being on the last stop of the GO train is you're able to do that. Some cities, you're not that fortunate and you're reliant on buses or having to drive down yourself. The seventh part of my video is more bonus information or people who are looking to move to Oshawa from out of province or out of country. Because if you're in and around the GTA, the cost of utilities and daycare and groceries is going to be relatively the same. Um, so start off with daycare. So both of my kids, they don't go to daycare. My wife, she stays at home and I'm in real estate. I asked my wife to reach out to her mom groups on Facebook to try and find out what people are paying in Oshawa for daycare. And they were given ranges. And so if you were looking for a home daycare, or if you're looking at a Montessori, the, the huge range from that is $20 a day, which would be $100 a week, $400 a month. And it goes up to $61 per day, which would be like over 300, like $305 per week, or just over $1,200 per month for the, 
the, the actual daycare location and Montessori. Now, one thing a lot of moms suggested is if they were doing the, the, um, like the actual daycare locations, consider Montessori because it wasn't that much difference of a price point and Montessori is more desirable, I suppose. Um, so that was with the, um, the daycares. If you are looking at utilities, so for the utilities, I've used numbers that I paid for 2019 and I averaged it out because during the summer our electricity was, was off the charts because I like it very cold so the air conditioner was working extra hard and when you get into the water uh, during the summer I water the grass a lot because I want green grass so it's huge fluctuation so I just averaged it out throughout the course of 2019. So for the electricity the electricity company in Oshawa is Oshawa PUC. Our average was $111 per month. And that was, like I said, in the summer, air conditioning absolutely killed my electricity bill. I think it like doubled based on that. Um, if you are new to the Oshawa PUC, there's a $30 setup fee. And so that covers the electricity, which would be your lights, if you have an electric stove, your washer and dryer, uh, TV, all that air conditioning and the price of gas which was Enbridge so the gas is for furnace if you have a gas stove any gas appliances if you have fireplaces so this is what gas would be covering and our average was $99 per month and with that if you're setting it up it's a $25 setup fee which is a one-time fee if you are uh, setting up water so Durham Region water uh, like I said during the summer, I water my grass a lot, A, because I have a dog and he leaves yellow spots on the grass, so we water it a lot to avoid that. Our average was $82 per month and the water, the grass a lot. If you are uh, setting it up, it's a $30 setup fee and they do require a deposit. So I believe it was around $250 deposit that after one year you actually get back, but it's more along the lines of if you're new to Durham Region Water, they want you to pay a deposit uh, before you can establish your relationship with them. And internet. So with us, like I've got Bell and we're paying um, like 60 something dollars a month, but that was because I tracked down a door-to-door -door salesperson to try and get the best prices I could. So we are getting a good price on internet. If you are interested in you know, getting internet, I'd definitely help you with that, no problem. So Bell Rogers, on average, if you didn't go to a door-to-door -door salesperson to try and get the internet, they're advertising it right now for about $114 per month. If you want something that's more affordable, uh, the top one that came up on my list when I was doing research was Tech Savvy, and that's about $37 per month for internet. Uh, the last point is groceries, and I'm just going to use the reference of milk. So we have two small kids, so we're still at the, the homo milk stage. So. Milk here is $5.39 on average uh, for a four liter bag of homo milk. Well, that concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some information out of it that you didn't know before. If you forgot, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. If you have questions or comments, drop them below or you can reach out directly. My uh, personal cell phone is below, my email is there. I will respond to you. And if you want, call, text, email, send the carrier pigeons, whatever way you want to get a hold of me, that's what you do. And I will respond back to you. If you want to chat about moving to Oshawa, I absolutely love it when people reach out. People are reaching out from all over Ontario, the GTA, even outside of the country. So it's been, uh, this channel has been getting great response. And if you subscribe to the channel, click the little bell as well. That way you're notified each and every time I do a new video. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions.